Hi, and welcome to this FONAF Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at FONAF, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we're going to customize our Business Central e-invoices. E-invoicing is the electronic exchange of invoices between businesses and their clients, cutting out the need for paper and the hassle that comes with it. By going digital, businesses can reduce manual work, avoid mistakes, and speed up payment processing. It also helps with automating tasks, tracking payments, and staying compliant with tax regulations. Across Europe, countries like France and Germany are making electronic invoicing mandatory to ensure tax transparency and efficiency. While the actual regulations and requirements differ from country to country, it is critical for businesses to stay compliant and avoid penalties and remain competitive. In Germany, for example, two common standards are used to meet these requirements, Exrechnung and Zugwert. No matter which one you're using, Fornaf has a solution that's got you covered. In an earlier coffee break, we spoke about how the Fornaf e-invoicing extension makes creating and importing e-invoices as easy as possible. Today, we will speak about customizing the standard table mapping. To demonstrate customizing e-invoicing, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will override the standard header mapping. In step three, I will override the standard line mapping. In step four, I will create a new document type. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will work on the Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2024 Wave 1 release. I've installed the 4NAV customizable report pack and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. I've also installed the 4NAV e-invoicing extension. Both extensions can be downloaded from the 4NAV website or from the app source. I've also downloaded and set up Visual Studio Code. Of course, everything I do today will work for a cloud environment as well. I follow the steps from our earlier e-invoicing coffee break to set up the e-invoicing, and you can find that by following the QR code you can see on the screen. The first thing we will do is to override the standard header mapping. There is default mapping for the sales invoice and the credit memo, but what if we have a new field that we want to use instead of a standard field? So. Let's get out of PowerPoint. Let's get into Business Central. This is a standard uh, Cronus Denmark database with some standard customers and invoices in there. And I've created a new posted sales invoice in here. And that posted sales invoice has a couple of customizations because it has a new payment reference field that I've added in an extension. And it has an e-invoice description that I use in the, in the lines. And you can also see that I've used the responsibility center in here uh, instead of no responsibility center at all. And if I create this, uh, the e-invoicing document, I am just going to send it and I'm going to create a new electronic document and save it on disk. And I'm going to use the Fornaf x format. And um, the format doesn't really matter because the mapping works the same for everything else. And the x is just a nice format to play around with. So I'm going to save this as an electronic document to my disk, which gets me an XML file. And if I open that with Notepad, you can see a lot of data that computers like and human beings don't usually. Um, but we can find in here that I don't get the payment reference and I don't get the, uh, uh, the e-invoicing description that I wanted either. There we go. And if we find the seller, see if I can find that one. I've prepared this obviously, so I know what to look for. There we go, the seller trade party node that has the Kronos Denmark AS in there. So we're going to uh, mess all of this around a little bit. Um, starting with, I want to use the new payment reference that we've got here. Now, obviously, I need to do this in VS Code because I need to override the 4NAV standard mapping in VS Code. To do that, I have created a new extension. This new extension contains my 
table extensions. So we have the new payment reference in the sales header. We have the new payment reference in the sales invoice header, etc., etc. We will share this extension with you at the end of the coffee break. And in here, I have an e-invoicing events code unit. And that e-invoicing events by uh, for now as an event subscriber to the code unit for nav e-document interface. And it has the subscribe to the event on after document to invoice descriptor, which means that this gets triggered after Fornav has done uh, their own mapping. So what I'm going to start with is the invoice descriptor table. And the invoice descriptor table is the Fornav table that holds all of the all of the mapped data from, in this case, the sales invoice, uh, the posted sales invoice. Uh, and the invoice descriptor is going to be used by Fornav to generate the XML. Now, let's go and type some code. I'm going to do some really quick typing because watching somebody type code is about as exciting as watching grass grow, maybe slightly less. So I'm going to type really quickly. And what I will type in here is I get my sales invoice header and variable, and I'm going to write some code and I'm going to check the invoice descriptor type. So if the invoice descriptor type is an invoice, uh, and instead of invoice, it can also be the uh, credit memo. If it is an invoice, I'm going to get the sales invoice header and I can get the sales invoice header by the invoice number field in the invoice descriptor because that's where we store it. And then I'm going to update the invoice descriptor payment reference with the sales invoice header PTE new payment reference field. Push that into Business Central. That gets my list of posted sales invoices and let's go and send and store this as an electronic document again. And if I find my reference, there we go. Now we have a payment reference field which contains the information that I've added in my new field in my table. So that's the first step in modifying the standard field mapping. We can push this a little bit further because my responsibility center has a specific name, which is, uh, this is actually Danish, I can't really read it, uh, or something. Um, anyway, I want to use the name of this responsibility center instead of the name of the company itself. And by default, for now, we'll use the, the responsibility center address in the mapping. So the address and everything is already mapped, but the name is not. So I am going to go back to VS Code. And I'm going to do some more quick typing. And for variables, I'm going to get my responsibility center and the Fornav party, which I'm going to call seller. Uh, something is going slightly wrong. Because I need to put my code in the right place in all of the begins and ends. There we go. What we have is we do an if a responsibility center dot get uh, with the sales invoice header responsibility center. We have the sales invoice header already. And if we get a responsibility center, we need to update the responsibility center information in the seller information. Now, the seller information, like we said, is stored in a subtable, sub and that subtable is the Fornav party table. And that contains all of the names and addresses, et cetera, that we need. And to get the Fornav party table, of course, you can write your own code, but we have created uh, functions to get all of the possible subtables. So from the invoice descriptor, which contains the base information about our invoice, we can do the find first seller, which we call with the 
for an F party as a variable. And that gets me the seller information from, uh, from the for and F mapping data. Of course, I can find more data in here. If I get a full list of function, functions, I get the find first buyer and find first buyer contacts, uh, etc. And I can also, once we get into the whole uh, creating your own mapping data, you can do an init buyer and init buyer contact, etc., to initialize the tables and map them to uh, to the invoice descriptor. So I get the seller from the invoice descriptor. I update the seller.name with responsibility center.name and I modify the seller. I push this into Business Central. Now let's send our document again. I find the seller trade party node. And in there, we now don't have the Kronos name anymore, but we have the Kronos uh, Reudovre or whatever it's called. So that's how you would update the more complex information in the subtables. And just like we can change the header information, we can also change the line information. Since a header can contain multiple lines, we need to iterate over the data set. And just like with the seller information, there's a function to get the lines for the invoice descriptor. And once again, we go to our on after document to invoice descriptor event subscriber. I'm going to add some more variables and now it's going to get slightly more complicated. Uh, I'm going to get the sales invoice line. I'm going to get the trade line item, which is the subtable that we use for the mapping of the invoice lines and the credit memo lines. And I need an integer to map my line number. And there we go, there's the code. Now, what I have is this block of code. The first thing we do is find first trade line items, which is a similar function to the find first seller, only this gets uh, all of the trade line items, uh, so I can iterate over the uh, over the trade line items with a normal repeat and a until trade line item dot next is zero. So that iterates over all of the trade line items. Then what I need to do is I need to evaluate the this code is doing far too much here. Uh, I need to evaluate the line number from the trade line item line ID. The line ID is a text field uh, because that's what the mapping to XML likes. Um, the line number is an integer. So if I want to get the sales invoice line from the line ID, I need to evaluate it into an integer. And then I get my sales invoice line with the sales invoice header, the number and the line number that I've got. Then what I can do is if my sales invoice line PTE in e invoice description is not empty, I'm going to override the trade line item dot description with the sales invoice line PTE invoice description, and I'm going to call a modify. And that's it. That's going to that's going to change the mapping of the description field to my new custom e invoicing description. Push this into Business Central again. And have a look at our invoice and we find that the e-invoice description is e-invoice and bicycle and let's see if we can find that in the generated xml in the supply chain uh, trade transaction which is the X rechnung mapping for the line information, we find the description, and the description is now e invoice bicycle. So that's how you would that's how you would override the line information. And of course, there's a lot more mapping information. And if you just uh, create an extension, subscribe to the events, and create the variables, you will find the, all of the fields and all of the mapping uh, because we have 
made sure that everything has its own descriptions that uh, that you need. Finally, we would like to completely replace the standard mapping or even create a new document type. And to do this, we need to override the standard mapping and build our own. There's a special event that we have created to do this. And I am not in this webinar going to do the entire override and, uh, and change the entire mapping uh, because that would take far too much time. We promised you a coffee break of 15 minutes and I'm already over time, I can see. So I'm going to give you the basic toolbox to do this. What we have, uh, I have created a new um, event subscriber in my events code unit, and that also subscribes to the Fornav eDocument interface. Only this subscribes to the on document to invoice descriptor um, event. And what you can do in here is if you create your own uh, uh, your own invoice descriptor in here, that will completely override the Fornav code. So if you create your entire mapping here with the uh, init fields uh, functions that I've talked about earlier, uh, then the Fornav code will not be triggered and you can run your entire um, mapping in, uh, in your own code. With that, let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to change the mapping of our header. We found that we can change basic information directly. For more complex information like the seller, we needed to get the relevant subtable first. Then we changed the lines. And for the lines, we could also use this, the function to get the subtable. Once we loaded the subtable, we could iterate over the entries. Finally, we found that we can completely override the Fornav mapping by subscribing to the on document to invoice descriptor event. You can find all of the code we created today in our GitHub repository. If you follow the QR code, you will find more information. I can see that we have no questions at the moment. If you do have any questions, please uh, write them in the questions box. If not, I will wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about Fornav or if you want to download the Fornav Designware Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions about Fornav, please email them to support at fornav.com. Now you can see we have one question coming in. If I can read this. Can you change the standard unit codes? Yes, you can change the standard unit codes, though um, there is a standard mapping between the uh, unit codes, uh, which you can override if you want to. And EA is mapped from uh, uh, from pieces from the uh, from the standard uh, from the standard European code for pieces, I believe, is mapped to EA. So you don't actually need EA in your system. For now, does the mapping automatically. That's it for the questions, and that's it for this coffee break as well. Yeah, for a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee break coffee breaks, please visit fornaf.com slash coffee break. And with that, thank you very much for joining me today, and I will see you at the next coffee break. Goodbye.